Well, next tonight to what's being claimed by disability campaigners as an important victory in the legal battle for wheelchair users to have priority use of wheelchair spaces on buses. Doug Pawley from Weatherby first brought the case to the courts when, in 2012, he was refused entry to a bus when a woman with a baby in a pushchair refused to move out of the area when asked. Well, today the Supreme Court unanimously ruled that bus drivers should now consider further steps to make reluctant passengers move. Our correspondent Daniel Hewitt was there. He tried to board a bus in Leeds and ended up at the Supreme Court in London. Thank you. We accept Mr Pawley's case that First Group's policy should have gone further than it did. But today, that five-year journey ended in victory for Doug Pawley, ensuring bus companies must do more to make room for wheelchair users. This is a major day for the rights of disabled people. Catching the bus is a fundamental thing that most people expect to be able to do. This is a really positive judgment, five years in the making. It began in February 2012. Doug tried to board the number 99 first group bus from Weatherby to Leeds, but was forced to get off when a mother with a pushchair refused to move from the only wheelchair space because her baby was asleep. Doug successfully sued First Group, saying their policy of requesting, not requiring passengers to move, was discriminatory. But First Group successfully appealed at the High Court, so Doug took his appeal to the highest court in the land. The court is now adjourned. And today, seven judges ruled unanimously in his favour, concluding it was not enough for drivers to simply request a passenger to move. They must do more, pressurising that passenger, refusing to drive on if necessary. But the judgment fell short of making it a legal requirement. The existing uh, policy of request but not require or request and do nothing is not good enough because that is the only space in which wheelchair users and some other disabled people can travel and unless it's made available to them, they're being prevented from getting off the getting on the bus. But despite Doug's victory in there, the Supreme Court, it's a few hundred yards away in the Houses of Parliament that disability charities now want a new law passed, making it much clearer the rights of disabled people when travelling on a bus and the legal responsibilities of those travel companies. It is still a very confusing situation. We are relying on people's goodwill to move. Ultimately, the driver cannot force that passenger to move because he doesn't have the power of the law behind him, nor do the police if he were to call the police to the situation. Doug, though, believes today marks a cultural shift, recognition that companies must do more to make travelling easier for wheelchair users. And for now, he'll drink to that. Daniel Hewitt, ITV News at the Supreme Court in London. Well, a little earlier, I spoke to Manish Patel from the disability charity Scope and I began by asking him about the significance of today's ruling. This is a really important milestone for disabled people and it's a victory for common sense. Disabled people fought hard for wheelchair spaces but they often find that they're unable to use them or face difficulties in using them. And what this ruling does is it sends a really strong message to buses and transport providers that they have a responsibility to ensure that all of their passengers can travel comfortably, including disabled people. But it still stops short of being law, so it's still open to interpretation, isn't it? This ruling will ensure that um, transport providers and buses really take steps to ensure that wheelchair users can use these spaces and we really hope that there's training in place to ensure it's implemented effectively. But you're still in a position whereby if uh, someone is refusing to move to make way for a wheelchair user, it's down to the driver to sort of put the pressure on, um, wouldn't you rather it had actually been made legal one way or the other? Each case is different so we really want training to be in place to ensure that drivers have the knowledge to be able to respond to each situation appropriately to ensure that all their passengers, wheelchair users, people with buggies, elderly people, can travel safely and use transport um, the same as everyone else. How do we rectify this problem? I mean, people with buggies, people with pushchairs that don't fold up, they would say that they need those spaces too. Should we be looking at another way of addressing this issue? We know that for people with buggies or young children, travelling on buses can be very difficult, but it's even harder for wheelchair users. Wheelchair users don't have the option to fold down their wheelchair, so often buses are the only form of transport they can use, especially if other forms are inaccessible. So today's ruling 
really sends a message to bus companies that they need to take steps to ensure that all of their passengers can travel comfortably when using buses. And we really want to see proper training and guidance to implement this effectively. OK, that's all I've got time for. But Minesh Patel from Scope, thank you. Lots of you have been getting in touch with us today on our Facebook page and leaving your comments. Yes, Gemma Dawn Thomas says prams are foldable and babies can be held. Wheelchair users have no such option, so people with prams should definitely move them. Next one's from Sarah Hesselwood. As a new mum, I would really struggle to fold down the pushchair and hold my bags and newborn. I think it's first come, first served. Melissa Baker says, I would always fold my pushchair if a wheelchair user got on the bus, but some bigger chairs that hold two children or a sleeping baby can be awkward. And Tony Newbury, any person who wants a baby to get off so a wheelchair can get on needs to take a look at themselves. You should put a child first, no matter what the circumstance is. Thanks for all your comments and getting in touch on our Facebook page today.